Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, today, this is what we're gonna work on. So I'm gonna create um, this really cool card uh, using an embossing folder and distress oxide. So you can really use any kind of ink, but um, that's what I'll be using today is the distress oxide. So this is a new embossing folder that I got from a dear friend for my birthday. And I've been having some fun with it. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this technique. And I actually saw this demoed by uh, Nina Marie, I think it's Trapani. She's a design team member from Simon Says Stamp. And she just, uh, yeah, really quickly was able to just kind of do this technique, create a card really, really fast. And I thought, oh, yeah, we could try that. See how quickly I can get it done. Because you guys know I tend to have longer videos. So let's see if I can make a shorter one. So those are gonna be the cards today or the card today. I'm gonna to basically use these colors, but this is just to show you, um, these are the same colors here. Okay, so on this card, I used uh, Uncharted Mariner, uh, Worn Lipstick and Wilted Violet. So that's the purple coral and kind of the blue color on this one. And then on this one, I use Salvage Patina, uh, Peacock Feathers and Uncharted Mariner. So that's what these colors are. So first of all, what you're going to need is a piece of cardstock. So I've got just plain white. I think this is a 80 pound cardstock and you're going to need an embossing folder. So I've cut this down to four by five and a quarter, um, just so that I'll have a nice white border on my card when, it, uh, when I'm finished with it. Also, that is what tends to fit within this um, embossing folder. I'm pretty sure this embossing folder came from Timu or something like that. So I'm not sure which, uh, I, I don't have a name for it. So all I'm going to do, uh, because this is a thinner cardstock and I want it to go through and have a nice impression, I'm just going to give it a quick mist all the way across on the back of it here, um, just to kind of help the fibers stretch a little bit as it's going through uh, the embossing folder, or going through with the embossing folder anyways. And I'm going to fit that in here and try and center it up as much as as I can. Okay, and I'm going to use my... Okay. I'm going to set this through my uh, die cutting machine. The die cutting machine that I'm using is a Gemini Junior, which is an electric one, and I love it. So good. Let's check and see what kind of impression we got. Oh, yeah, pretty good. So you can see here, just a minute, I'll actually put these away and then bring that up so you can. See the depth and the dimension here. Okay, so this would be, normally this would be the front of the card, right? So this is where it's embossed. So it's pushed up into, um, so you get all those great textures. Camera is like kind of wonky do here. Let's try that there. So you get all these great textures of all the seashells and everything like that. But for this technique, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over to the debossed side. So all of the white that's pushed down into the seaweed and the sea and the um, seashells and things like that. So I want to uh, the side that I'm going to play with is going to be the debossed side. So my images have been pushed into my cardstock. Okay. So the colors that I want to use today are going to be Unshattered Mariner, Tumble Gloss, and Broken China. And so the one that I'm going to start with first is going to be Tumble Gloss. And I'm just going to strictly take my ink pad and I'm going to swipe it across the top. So you can see by swiping it across the top, my ink pad hits all of the flat surface, not the white underneath. It will get some areas, but that's not that's not a big deal. So I don't mind that too much. And I'm just going to kind of get my fingers in here and I'm going to allow it to kind of drag across there. Right there. And I do want to dry this off just a bit in between because I don't want to drag the ink onto my other pads or... Um, like push the ink over the sides into all of the seashell thingies there. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a dry because of course it is an oxide. So because it's an oxide, that means it has pigment properties to it. And of course pigment inks sit on top of your cardstock. So this is, this is an oxide. So it also has dye based properties to it, but it is a pigment based ink. Okay, and I'm gonna catch the edge here a little bit. So and this is essentially the technique. This is all it is, is it's just dragging your pad. You get this really cool um, streaky effect. You get some uh, lines and some texture along the way.
then basically we're just going to build up the color to however you would like it. So now I'm going to pingo, pull out the Uncharted Mariner, get a few of this darker colors on here, a couple of darker swipes. And of course, when you're using a darker color, that helps to add um, depth and intensity, right? Uh, darker colors push your um, background down, lighter colors bring it forward, right? The more light you have on something, the uh, closer it appears to you. When it's in a shadow or in a darker color, the further away it appears to you. That's why so many people like to wear black because it's, it appears slimming because it kind of pushes uh, visually. It makes you look a little further away or a little taller, can add depth kind of thing. So here's the first layer. Looks pretty cool, right? I'm kind of liking it. But what I want to do is now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add another layer just on top. Because again, they're oxides, right? So you can build up layers and kind of go back and forth or um, oxides sit on top of each other. Because again, it's a pigment-based property. I dried it off in between. I've added a little bit of the lighter tumbled glass. Tweezers here to hold it down a little bit. You don't necessarily have to dry it in between, but I prefer because then I at least let the ink sit where it is and then I can layer on top of it. Because if it's wet on wet, an oxide, it's going to mix together instead of sitting on top. And giving you that cool look of being able to have uh, multiple layers of color. I'm going to bring in the Broken China. Give that a wipe. A couple of areas here. All right. Dry again. How's everybody's summer going so far? So I actually filmed another video today, earlier, which will be going out uh, before this video. So this is the video after the mixed media video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, but again, we're just playing with inks and things like that. But I hope you're really enjoying the summer series. I missed out on Christmas in July. It occurred to me as I was watching a bunch of Christmas in July videos. It's like, oh, I probably could have done that. But of course, I did because I was so busy this summer. I did a lot of my filming back in May. <laughs> and I was so not thinking Christmas in July. So now I'm just adding some layers again of the uncharted mariner and i'm not dragging it all the way across that's what i did with this one um i did get full um swipes of the color but i'm kind of liking this hit and miss it's giving this really cool um textury weathered look which i'm i'm liking particularly with this um embossing folder it kind of gives it that weathered seam look ish kind of thing um anyway yeah so i was thinking about those cool Christmas in July videos and I was like oh I could have done that and uh, yeah I did not get my poop and group in order to do it so and yeah that was all back in May when I did all the videos all the most recent videos were all created back in yeah May long weekend I think it was and um, so now I'm just trying to get I needed to get a few more out so that I could post while I'm away on holidays because I'm going away uh, next week with my family and so really looking forward to that another Another week away of just uh, some fun lake mountain time, which would be really lovely. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that. So I hope you all have had some fun adventures. I just heard of uh, one of my friends went to Disneyland this year and her and her sister ended up getting quite sick. So I was, you know, that's, that's never fun when you're traveling, especially when you're so far away from home. That's not fun. So hopefully you guys aren't all having adventures like that. It was. I'm just going to say it. That sucks. So, okay. What do we think? Look at how cool. Loving the texture. Let me see if I can get some more light on this for you guys. So, and of course, because it's an embossing folder, no, there's no right way for up or down. 
I don't like doing that. Now, let's get a card base and see what we can do here. Now, the last one that I did, I used kind of a light blue. But let's see if that's what I want to do again. So here's a light, here's the light, here's, blah, 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 blah. let's try that again. Here it is with a light blue. Let's try have another shade of blue that we could do as well, especially seeing as how I didn't do turquoise. That's kind of nice, but I, I, I don't know. I think between the two, I like the, the contrast between the darker and then the lighter color there. So I do like that one. But I also have a this kind of darker purpley color. This is what's kind of fun to try them out and see. Well, that kind of pops right off of there, doesn't it? Now that's different. Mm -hmm. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. What do you guys think? Tough decisions, tough decisions. Okay, so I like that better than this blue. So let's put that one away. But what about this blue? Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay, so blues are this one kind of like the dark i don't mind the dark it's actually different let's see if we get a look at that from behind here so so that's that one or this one i think this one is more subtle so i think i'm going to go with that one either or could work but i'm going to go with the slightly more subtle one i know you're all shocked and amazed that i'm going with subtle it's okay i'm feeling fine not to panic <laughs> Um, okay, so now for the background here, I'm going to pop it up. So I'm going to give it a little bit of dimension. The other nice thing is, of course, because I use, there's a lot of ink on here, so I do want to continue to allow that to dry. But because there's so much ink, by using, and dimension, by using foam tape, it will stick to a lot. So it will allow for um, the foam tape to kind of get into all of the grooves in between where the embossing folder is versus when I use liquid adhesive, right? So all of this would be really hard to get to stick down. So I'd have to catch, make sure that I caught all of the debossed areas versus using a um, foam tape, which will stick onto the uh, the debossed parts plus the flat of the part. So it, it'll have a much better adhe adhesion, adherence, adhesion, adherence, whatever. And, um, also, it works really good, too, because this piece of card has now absorbed, because, again, it's not a watercolor card stock, but um, just a regular old piece of card stock. It has absorbed a lot of liquid because that was a lot of ink that was added to it because we swiped directly from the pad right onto the card. So that's a lot of that's a lot of ink for a regular piece of paper to hold. Okay, so there we go. Now, peel that off. Choo, choo, choo. One. And two. Three. And four. Oh, Missed the last little edge. There we go. Okay, so for those of you who don't like to use foam tape because once it sticks or hits your cardstock, um, you know, it's kind of in place. Really good handy tip is to put a little bit of liquid adhesive on it. Not only does that help, especially if your um, your foam tape is older, right? Uh, you know, you can reactivate some of the adhesive here. But by adding a little bit of liquid adhesive as well, it does give you just a smidgen more wiggle wiggle time. Okay. So let's put this on here. There we go. There. Yeah, that. I'm just going to turn that over, give it a little bit of a wipe here. Okay. Now, the sentiment that I chose is this Sending Sunshine. So it's just a simple stamped um, by heat embossed in black. That's why you can see that little bit of. Um, shine on it so i uh, stamped it in black versafine clair ink 
and then used a clear um, embossing powder over it, which is what helps give it that shine. So it looks like it's shiny black, um, but I don't, I, I don't like to use black embossing powder because it leaves little speckles all over. Versus now, um, if there's little clear speckles all over, it's not the end of the world. Okay. So I'm going to use this Sending Sunshine because I think that's kind of a, just a nice, works with the, um, uh, with the kind of the background kind of thing. But I think what I want to do is I want to add just a skosh of color. So I have some oxides, blues, and um, kind of a teal color on these brushes. I'm not going to add anything to it. All I'm going to do is just kind of uh, swipe whatever ink is already on here, just like that. Kind of want to make a bit of an ombre, so going from a white to this um, kind of turquoisey, then to the blue is what is my intent. But I'm not adding any ink, I'm just using whatever is currently on the brush. And I might have to add some ink, it doesn't look like there's a lot. This I think this is a new one. Yeah, let's just add just a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, there we go. That's better. Oh, fudge. I don't have to work that in because I got splidgies. Should have dabbed it up. Should have dabbed it up. All right. Okay, it's that. Now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to blend that out. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. All right. So let's clean this up. Okay. So you might have seen right here where I did get, I had a little bit too much ink on my brush um, and it kind of carried over a little bit. But I was able, fortunately enough, because it was an oxide, I was able to buff it out by bringing in the other color. Okay, now this is a pretty dry baby wipe. So now all I'm going to do is go in and give this a wipe down. And that's going to allow the embossing, where it was heat embossed, to resist all of the ink. And so I'm going to bring my shine back in my sending sunshine, make it all black again. Now, if you find that there are some areas that did not rise, as you can see here, okay, I've still got all of that really lovely color, but also the um, crispness of the black. If you find, though, that your ink or the um, embossing powder did not re-raise or is still feeling a little cloudy, you can come in with your heat tool and just reactivate the embossing powder. You don't want to burn it, so you want to keep things moving. But we're just going to quickly reactivate the embossing powder. There we go. Okay. Oh, good. Jeez. Okay, so we're going to give that a second to dry. Now I have a custom made um, sentiment. I mean, they're all custom made because technically you made it, right? But I made one that is now actually going to coordinate specifically with my card using some of the colors that were already on here. So look at how cool that looks, right? So that just brings it rather than having that really bright white standing out. Now I've got the white down into the blue. I think that's really nice. Okay. And do I want to just stick it down? Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to outline that in black. Show you how to do that. So you can see on the back of here, I've got this really hilarious um, outline. And what I want to do is I'm going to take my black Sharpie and I'm just going to go along the edge of the line here. Oops. So in the same way that oftentimes you'll distress the edge of a card or like a card panel or whatever, you chalk the edge um, in black or brown or whatever to give it that kind of shadow highlight or whatever. Um, I'm basically doing the same thing here with my Sharpie and just going around the outline. And you'll see that I've, I've turned it upside down and that's so that I don't get this pen slips. 
I could slip across the back and it won't impact the front of my item. You know, the front of my, uh, my sentiment, because I, I still won't use this preferably, especially as now I've now gone to all of this work. I want to make sure that I'm going to get use out of it. But now you can see along the edge of it, instead of it showing white, I've got black. So what that helps to do is separate it. Look at how much more dimension, like it, it looks like a, instead of the, the white kind of blending into the white, now it's got a clear definition going around the edge of the sentiment. So I don't have to pop it off if I don't want to. Which I don't think that I do. I think I just want to keep it like a nice, simple, um, easy to mail card. So I'm just going to take some liquid adhesive here. And again, I'm using my, uh, what is it called? I think it's called Glue Press by Suma Sweet Petunia and Tonic Studios. And it's a handy gosh darn thing. Keeps all my liquid adhesive like right at hand. Nozzles don't clog. It's a great thing. Great thing. Okay, so I'm just going to stick this down here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think that's fairly straight. Straightish to my eyes. And I'm going to put that to the side and put a, a block on top of that. Let's get out a tray. I'm going to put a few little beads on there. Um, flat back pearls and I have this really cute one these ones I got from Allie um, and they're a variety of sizes but they're in this really pretty white that has kind of like an iridescence on the front of it so when I did it on this card they kind of look like kind of look like pearls I'm not sure if you can see the white down there or not but yeah they kind of ended up looking like pearls which I thought was really cool with the seashells and things like that the clam shells could be a pearl you never know or no so I'm going to pour some of these into this little uh, tray here, which makes it very easy, makes it much easier to either dig them out, but also to um, you know, put them back into the package too, which is even more important to them being able to dig them out. All right, so now I'm gonna pick out five. So I've got this one ginormous one, which I try to, if I'm doing five, I either try to do all the same size or, um, if I've got differing sizes, then I like to try and do, uh, you know, like five different sizes. Because I usually, if it's a packet like this, then I definitely have the different sizes. So this is the next biggest one. So I'm going to go over here. And the next biggest one. Mini tiny little guy. Let's step up there. So, and again, I like to, when I'm doing my jewels and, and things like that, I try to keep them in odd numbers, right? Odd is, um, uneven numbers are easier for our brains to uh, look at and to enjoy, to follow. Um, yeah, if we start to get into even numbers, for some reason, it kind of creates a bit of a stutter in the brain somehow. I, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I just know that it does. Okay. So using the glue press now, I'm going to put down a couple of just a little few dabs of glue. Letting that uh, set. Oops. We oh, got a little carried away with that one. Yeah. Okay. And this is just actually a wax pencil. I think I picked this up off of AliExpress as well. But uh, basically, I can sharpen the edge of this. This helps to pick up any small items. It's uh, slightly sticky, so it's very, very handy. Just have to watch the tips of those, though. Make sure that uh, you're not getting too. Uh, too rough with them because they don't like it. You'll have to resharpen and rid of some of that. So, well, folks, here's our card for today. What do you think? It's a pretty simple technique, really easy peasy, creates a really beautiful um, background. So, if you have um, floral uh, embossing folders, textured embossing folders would work too, whether it's a basket weave or a um, 
actually have a basket weave. That would be kind of fun to do varying shades of browns, right? Because you could make it look look like a textured burlap or or a basket. That would be really kind of cool. So doing a variety, <clears throat> sorry, three or four colors of brown. That would be neat. Um, let me see. I saw it on a C one, like so waves, waves with the different colors of blue. That would be really cool. Um, yeah, any kind of flowers would be lovely. Um, yeah, any any embossing folder that you've got. So take what you've got in your stash, uh, cardstock, some ink. Try it with it, just like with a regular ink. Dye based ink is fine. Um, the pigment based inks is what I use, the uh, distress inks, but pigment would work as well. So try it out with whatever you've got. Um, you know, these are all very inexpensive supplies. Uh, the beads pretty inexpensive. Embossing folders also a great, wonderful tool that are you can use for multiple uh, techniques. So I hope you give this a try. Please let me do, know if you do. If you have any questions, I'll see you down in the comments. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. And uh, oh, remember to keep it kind. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.